On behalf of the Committee of the Regions, I must say, committee, uh, Commissioner, it's a pleasure and an honor to welcome you to our uh, plenary session today. We will be, uh, we will be uh, discussing um, We will be discussing about the creation of an automotive alliance of regions. Now I think we should be clear about what we want, what we intend with this alliance, automotive alliance of regions. And I think it's very, very important to clarify our goal about this issue. We need decisive action to reach the EU climate, EU's climate goals. The transformation of the European automotive industry towards zero emission vehicles is the most comprehensive structural change in the sector to date. Such a complex transformation we think needs to be elaborated and implemented via multi-level governance framework based on a thorough territorial impact assessment, making sure it has adequate resources, policy support, measures, and addresses transition planning and social dialogue. The Committee of the Regions and the European Parliament underline that zero emission road transport cannot be achieved without just transition measures for the regions that rely on the industry providing this, providing this sector. Both uh, institutions underline also that it needs to be supported by dedicated funding lines and policy measures. So the reason why we are creating an uh, automotive alliance by regions across Europe is exactly to see how we can better achieve the goals that are established in a just way, in a way that can prevent a balancing address to those challenges. So it is with great pleasure that I now give the floor to uh, Commissioner uh, Schmidt for his uh, intervention. Um, ten minutes? That's fine. A little bit more? A little no, bit no, less? I, I, I think I can manage. Okay, so 10 minutes. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much. First, I, I must say it's always a great pleasure to be with you and to come to the Committee of Regions. I appreciate very much the invitation, um, honorable members. But before starting, I have again officially to congratulate you for your election uh, as a president, as a new president uh, of the Committee of Regions. But I also want to thank uh, Mr. Tsitsi Costas for the work he has done. I don't know if he's here, but uh, I want to thank him also for the very good cooperation we had during his mandate. So, uh, I, uh, and I'm sure that we will continue on this very positive and very constructive cooperation between the Commission and especially my departments and the Committee of Regions. I must say I am extremely happy uh, to hear about your initiative, because I, I think that this idea uh, of launching this automotive alliance of regions is a very smart and absolutely useful and necessary initiative. The automotive sector is clearly a world-leading industry to the European economy. It rep represents 8.2% of EU GDP, millions of jobs, more than close to 13 million of jobs, 6.6 .6 of the total EU employment. It generates a trade surplus, surplus of uh, uh, 76 billion euros for the EU, uh, uh, billions and billions of tax revenues, and uh, especially in terms of investment, 62 billion annually with, and 33% of total EU spending on innovation, and especially for many regions in Europe. I, I'm, I think it's the majority of regions in Europe are living, are largely depending on this sector for jobs, for prosperity, 
for development. So I think this is a really excellent idea to launch this alliance. Uh, certainly, the automotive sector, and you have said it already, Mr. President, that uh, uh, is uh, at the, in the forefront of the green and digital transition. It is managing the shift to zero emission mobility and the increasingly rapid introduction of connected and automated technologies. Because we have, on one hand, the green technologies, electromobility, but we also have more and more the use of uh, digital uh, technologies in, uh, in, in, in cars. <clears throat> the shift to zero emission mobility is speeding up. We had uh, this week a very important decision which was taken by the uh, Council of Ministers. 2035 will be the end of the combust combustion engine in Europe. So this is quite a short time to adapt, to change, to innovate to switch this production uh, to a new, a totally new uh, technology. This is also due to the recognition by the industry that zero emission mobility is not only des desirable for the environment, but also critical to future competitiveness. We have to maintain, we have to maintain a strong, innovative, and I would say the most innovative car industry in Europe. This is something essential. For Europe, this is essential for the future of industry in Europe. Europe is taking this as an opportunity. I, we, I think we have to see this as an opportunity, even if we know, even if we know that this is also at the same time a major challenge which we have to manage. We have to manage this transition, uh, which has consequences on many, many enterprises. And the speed and success of managing this significant transition uh, largely hinges on upgrading the skills level of the uh, workforce. Notably, digital, scientific, engineering skills that are missing in the job market now. This is unprecedented both in timing and in scale. To manage this transition, leaving nobody behind, we need also to ensure that the job transitions are smooth, that we will not end up, and this is also the regional dimension, with regions losing their jobs, losing their economic substance. We have some bad experience of past restructuring in other sectors, textile in Portugal as an example, or steel in other countries, where finally regions were, uh, became economic deserts, and this should not happen this time. So moreover, we need to take the entire industry along. The big car man manufacturers, I think, are heavily investing. And I have a lot of contacts with all the big car manufacturing. And certainly they have some doubts. Certainly they have some uh, discussions on, on this rep uh, rapid transition. But globally, I would say uh, they are all rightly on track. And I think they have now uh, they have now, they are absolutely aware that 2035 is the date that what enterprises uh, need is predictability, uh, predictability. So they know, they have to know exactly how they have to organize their investments. So for the big car manufacturing, I'm rather confident. Now, the point is that the car industry is not just uh, the big uh, the big car, uh, uh, car companies or car uh, uh, enterprises. They, it, it's uh, an ecosystem of thousands of smaller uh, companies, the suppliers. And many of these suppliers are precisely depending still on the uh, combustion engine, producing very often very specific parts for the combustion engine car. And for them, for them, this means, obviously, the end of their business model. So they have to change their business model within 10 years or a bit more than 10 years. And this is a challenge for all of us, for the enterprises, obviously, for the staff, for the employees, but uh, uh, also for the regions, because some, many regions have 
this kind of suppliers, uh, uh, um, cities depending on one or two companies very much oriented towards uh, uh, special technologies in this, uh, uh, in this area. And these are very often, these are sometimes big groups. They can manage it better because they have also the uh, financial strength to adapt to these changes, to see what kind of alternatives do I have to change this company to a new technology. For instance, I have heard that some are changing in, in the direction of digital very much, so uh, because the new cars are mainly also digital instruments. But there are also smaller companies who have more difficulties to adapt to this new situation. There is a recent report which was made and which shows that only 37% of suppliers, 37% have already, are already engaged in this transformation. So this is something which shows that there are still quite a number of suppliers which have not yet started this transformation, though they might depend uh, very directly from, uh, from the um, uh, present uh, technology, the combustion engine. Now, what are, what are the U Europe's responses? First, I think the major issue is about skills, because if we are transforming uh, these uh, production processes and technologies, we have also to prepare people to these major changes. And so we launched the Pact for Skills, and here the Pact for Skills includes also the regions. So I would be very pleased if your alliance joins also the Pact for Skills, because the Pact for Skills is a dialogue, a cooperation with enterprises, providers, uh, uh, skills providers, but also regions, social partners. I think that's our first response to uh, this change. Uh, the PAC can help address the industry's skills challenges, as indicated in the declaration that you will sign. Your new regional alliance would like to cooperate with the objectives of the Automotive Skills Alliance under the Pact for Skills. So this is perfect. And I believe this is a win-win situation. First, your alliance does not need to start from scratch, but you can build on concrete results on the Automotive Skills Alliance. Second, the Automotive Skills Alliance can disseminate its deliverables, spread its seed on the fertile grounds of your allied uh, regions. And finally, we can also expect strong synergies from this cooperation. Half of the members of your regional alliance either are direct partners of Automotive Skills Alliance or are the location of Automotive Skills Alliance partners. The second major element is what we launched in 2017, and I must say I was not a member of the Commission, so I can be very positive about my colleagues' initiative, uh, Commissioner or Vice President Savkovic's initiative, was to launch the uh, European Battery Alliance. We all know that the electric car, 40% of, of the value of an electric car is the battery. It's the battery. So if you are not producing the battery, you lose 40% of the added value of a car, and you end up not producing not only not the battery, but also the car. So I think this is a, was a big challenge, and we have built this battery alliance. And what happens now is that uh, there are at least 20 projects of uh, mega or giga battery industries all over Europe. And here again, the regional aspect is fundamental because we have to look how, where do these giga factories uh, are created? Are, where the, do these investments uh, should go? Well, they should go there to replace mainly also those companies who, 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 who due to the end of the combustion engine, come to an end to compensate uh, the jobs and also the economic industrial substance of this. So I think this is extremely important. Uh, we, we expect now, we expect now that about close to a million of new jobs can be created uh, in batteries, a million. And I think there will be more because we have to build also the value chain, and the value chain is not just the battery. The value chain is starting with the substances, the material, which allow us to build the batteries. And we know the biggest issue is today to be too much dependent 
on imports from especially some regions in the world. And therefore, I think there are possibilities, by the way, also in Portugal, to exploit lithium. Lithium is an essential component uh, for batteries to develop also a production of this kind of materials. So I think what you are doing is key. One issue is upskilling, reskilling the people, supporting uh, uh, investments in new uh, developments like the batteries. And uh, I think this is the best guarantee for keeping a strong, competitive, innovative uh, uh, automotive industry all over Europe and bring and continue uh, to bring, uh, bringing prosperity to so many regions all over our continent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, we would, I would like to invite you to stay with us. We have a series of statements and interventions from the floor, and if you agree after that, if you have time to react to them. Now it's my pleasure to give the floor to the president of the COR's Interregional Group of the Automotive Industry, our colleague Thomas Schmidt. You have the floor for four minutes. I'm you. <laughs> Please. <laughs> ja, vielen Dank, lieber ja, uh, President. Thank you very much, President. Commissioner, Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Fries. This is a good day for the European automotive region, but beyond that as well, because we have all the supply chains, and if they had to be created anew, we're talking about 1.8 million companies in Europe with at least 16 million employees. And we're talking about uh, the very crux of the of industry in Europe. So we're very happy to see this alliance. And I'd like to thank Mr. Costas, who took the initiative to set up this alliance. I'd like to thank Mr. Cotero, the current president, for continuing this impulse so we could set this up today. Thank you very much today for that. You have a position paper with uh, 10 important points. I'd like to take up some of those points. We discussed this for a long time. Because we've been discussing this for a long time, there is an urgent need to act. We're decommissioning. We've got a change in the automotive industry and its supply chains, and this has an immediate knock-on effect on our regions. We want to make sure that the trend towards a climate-neutral automotive industry be translated into the regions. The Automotive Alliance, the inter obviously looks to the need to achieve the climate goals in the automotive industry. Well, and we need support for this. For example, the Just Transition Fund could be part of that support. It's important for us, and Commissioner Schmidt said this, for this entire process to be mirrored in education and in further training and in, the terms, in terms of creating new jobs. That's where we've got to start, and we need a competition between the best solutions. And I'm not just talking about the engine, I'm talking about the entire chain. The, the battery alliance was mentioned. Again, we need to find have competition to find the best solution. And I'm sure there'll be leaps forward in technology that we're unfamiliar with now. We'll have new ways of storing energy. We need to be at the forefront in Europe. However, what we also need is a framework for research so that we can achieve 
these results. And we need to get over this valley of death of failed innovations so that we can come up with something new and brilliant. And in the Automotive Alliance, we have the solution at European and national and regional level, or at least we have the possibility of finding the solution. So thank you very much. Best of luck to the Alliance and look forward to future work. Right now, I would like to invite the representative of the European Association of Automotive uh, Suppliers, Mr. Sigrid de Vries, to take the floor for four minutes. You have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Happy to be here and indeed uh, also from our side. And I'm happy today not only to represent the European automotive the suppliers, minutes. but also the automobile manufacturers and tyre manufacturers and also the uh, dealers and workshops. We together are founding members of the Automotive Skills Alliance, which was very much supported by uh, the Pact for Skills by Commissioner Schmidt. Um, and we are so happy that also today the regions here launch the uh, regional alliance. I think it's fair to say that the automotive industry are staunch supporters of the regions, but very much also the other way around. Regions are very staunch supporters of the automotive industry. So we're really uh, happy to be here and to um, really also voice our full support for this uh, alliance. We believe it's extremely important. It was mentioned before uh, yesterday, uh, the, the, the Council of Member States, the Environment Council has taken a, a very important decision uh, on uh, CO2 standards for cars and for vans, uh, de facto banning uh, internal combustion engine technology. Uh, we were not in favor of that uh, position. We believe there is a need for rapid electrification but there is also still a need and room for advanced combustion engine technology, which will, which will also be needed um, elsewhere in the world to achieve our, carbon clim uh, our climate targets, carbon reduction targets. So we are not arguing to uh, compromise on climate goals, but we are arguing to make this transition manageable. And we believe there might now be unnecessary disruption um, that we will see, especially also in the regions and as um, uh, Commissioner Schmidt mentioned also um, on the side of the automotive suppliers specifically because they have the biggest job to do to transform and there's very little time. They're very, um, I think they're very busy. I think the 37% the that you mentioned uh, may well be true, but I think everybody is very much aware that they need to transform. It's just that their order books today are still filled with uh, orders that uh, are needed for combustion engine related technology and they have to make this transformation in a very short amount of, of time which they will do but they need support and it's important that all parties are brought together that there is co-creation especially also at the regional level involving academia vocational training uh, local authorities um, industry well, everybody basically that needs to chip in and that is very knowledgeable also about the local situation because there is where it needs to happen and also where the impact will uh, be felt very much. Um, I mentioned the Automotive Skills Alliance. I'd like to stress it again. We really hope that this Automotive Skills Alliance can kind of get a home as well in uh, the new uh, Automotive Regional Alliance that's launched today. We already have a very good working relation with uh, the uh, Committee of the Regions Automotive Intergroup. Um, and again, I'd li really like to voice our strong support, our full offer of support going forward, um, again, on behalf of the automotive suppliers, but also the other players in the automotive sector. So thank you very much. And, uh, we're the ones who thank you. Thank you for giving us your insights. Now we're going to have the regional view, the perspective of two regions that um, are where the, the automotive uh, sector is important. So uh, it's my pleasure to give the floor to members uh, Juan Garcia Gallardo from Castilla y León and uh, Guido Guidesi from Lombardy. Mr. Gallardo, you have the floor for three minutes. Buenas tardes, Good afternoon, Chairman. Good afternoon. Commissioner, thank you very much for this introduction and thank you very much to all the participants in this forum. This is the first time you welcomed me here and I hope it's not the last. 
Now, Castilian Leon is uh, one of the leading automotive uh, regions, and um, I think it's really very important for us to set up alliances so that we can cooperate, cooperate and focus um, our attention on the interests of our own industry and all Europeans, particularly workers in the automotive industry. I sincerely believe that it is our duty to look after the environment and nature and all natural areas. However, we also be, need to be aware of workers' needs. They're not uh, the ones who are responsible necessarily for destruction of the environment. I think uh, that uh, we need to extend the useful life of vehicles. That's one thing, the vehicles owned by the people in Castilla and Leon, for example. And all regions and territories need to support innovation. We need to uh, be at the forefront of research investigation. And uh, we also need, I think, to move towards new forms of transport, to have transitions towards different forms of mobility. And uh, we shouldn't limit uh, this to one single form of mobility. We need to be open to other options, other possibilities, for example, green hydrogen engines. And we also need to strengthen industry so that they can work on new things like the battery industry, for example. Battery industry, that's certainly part of this. So we need to create new infrastructures as well to facilitate transition. It's very important in also that uh, we uh, protect vulnerable people and all people so that people have a right uh, to have their own car. We don't necessarily need to have low emission zones. What we need is uh, uh, areas which are similar across the board. And we need to cooperate in order to achieve that. We need to share information and improve alliances and defend everybody's interests and not just the industry interests of one particular, particular lobby. We need to preempt new forms of mobility being introduced so that we're ready for the future. Because if we uh, don't rush ahead, if sorry, if we rush ahead without doing that, we're not going to be able to protect our industry appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Mr. Guidesi from Lombardy. You have the floor for three minutes. Grazie. Buon pomeriggio a tutti. Thank you and good afternoon to everybody. For some time in our region, we have been working on the automotive industry. We've made various proposals in order to move towards the zero emissions goal in the European directives that we are all pursuing. Now, the proposal that we've made is that we have full technological neutrality we have defended that view here as well. The aim being to develop new areas of activity uh, by producing uh, compatible fuels, biofuels, promoting new areas of research for alternative forms of fuels. We need to do this so that we can promote employment, and ensure that the uh, companies who are not able to convert necessarily, for example, companies who produce components, so that they can continue to survive and continue to provide employment and develop new employment opportunities. And I would add something else to that. Uh, we need, of course, to uh, protect the productive uh, the production side of our automotive industry on the content, uh, continent. And uh, that's extremely important indeed. And I think everybody will understand why that is important. It's not just the social side of things, of course. The idea is that all citizens in Europe should be able to own a car, have one available to us. Now, we're aware of the opportunities opp uh, offered by European funding, uh, in supporting technological neutrality and supporting the development of alternatives, alternative fuels, for example. 
it's very important that we focus on this so that we can reach our zero emissions goals, uh, not just through introducing electric vehicles. We need to work step by step, of course, so that we can make the appropriate use of any research done and also make the best use of the skills already uh, that we already have in our industries. So we support uh, this position very much indeed and thank you very much indeed for this meeting. And we hope that this is going to be the first of many opportunities like this. Thank you. Two uh, <coughs> interventions from the floor from our members, starting with political, uh, political groups. I give the floor to Adrian Teban for four minutes. Thank you, Mr. President, dear Commissioner. As you mentioned, uh, yesterday the Council has taken an historical decision upon the end of the combustion engine up to 2035. This is a great news for the climate and put us on the right track towards improving our road mobility in the not so far away future. But this is also a huge challenge for the industry. At this point, we should not waste any more time and focus on rolling out charging infrastructure. Also, we must start to responsibly source material for batteries and develop this market. However, at the very core of our endeavors, there are the hardworking citizens of our regions and cities. In my report that was vo voted in this plenary just half a year ago, the reskilling workers for the electric transition was the core of my argument. From our stand as APP group, we welcome the creation of the Automotive Regions Alliance, a much needed support network aiming to ensure a fair and successful transition for the automotive and supply industry. The cost of net zero carbon will be high. My meetings with various stakeholders showed that the fact the transition to a climate neutral economy and zero carbon mobility will improve or decline growth. It's only a quantitative issue. Of course, prosperity depends long term on decarbonization, but over the next five to 10 years, decarbonization will inevitably reduce the economic potential, most especially in the automotive industry regions. From a regional perspective, the existence of various ranges of technical solutions must be considered. Over one million jobs in car parts manufacturing and supply chain might be lost. We evaluate that two million, two four million workers will need the radical upskilling and retraining. In my hometown, <coughs> 3,000 jobs will be lost in the next coming years. Facing out of combustion engines cars will influence the automotive industry which will undergo a fundamental cross-cutting transformation process. It will affect the production process of the car companies, but also the automotive suppliers. Therefore, a just transition fund for the automotive sector on the model of the same fund dedicated to the coal regions is imposing itself on the agenda of the EU. Also, a true analysis of the specific regional impacts is crucial for providing tailored measures and ensuring the adaptation of the labor market. Employees of the automotive sector need to be rapidly learning new skills. This becomes questionable for older generation or lower qualified workers who will soon be at the risk of losing their jobs for not being able to adapt or find alternatives. It is essential to launch a dialogue and introduce policy measures that accompany workers to upskill or compensate and allow them to move to alternative jobs in the dignified manner. This transition, while driven by climate targets and economic competition, must be balanced with adequate social policies. We, representatives from the Romanian delegation and the Committee of the Regions, fully support the commitment to working hard towards fulfilling the climate targets, but in a just and fair manner so that no region is left behind. I also encourage all of our members to endorse the joint declaration of the Alliance of Automotive Regions. Thank you. Thank you so much. On behalf of the PES group, I give the floor for four minutes to Malte Krukals. Ja, guten Tag. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Good afternoon, President, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Schmidt, 
I'm very happy to be able to take the floor here. And everything Mr. Schmidt said, I think is quite true. At the same time, we are we have a big problem because we're a bit late with the decarbonisation, so we've got to move swiftly. And therefore, from an industrial and social and uh, labour market point of view, it's important that we have sufficient flanking measures. My region is not that big, about one million workers. We have 660 supplying companies with 83,000 jobs. And uh, the, the biggest manufacturer we have is Opel. So obviously there's territorial dimension to the automo automotive industry is we're changing entire automotive regions. So on behalf of Turing and, and my political group, I welcome the idea of having an automotive regions alliance. Obviously, we want, need to stick to the climate goals and the Green Deal. And we haven't done a lot in terms of saving CO2. And burning oil is absolutely uh, not uh, an idea for the future. We need it for much further things. We must stop using oil for climate reasons, and we also need to reduce our dependence uh, in geopolitical terms. So as soon as possible, we have to stop using a combustion engine which burns oil. Uh, we have good flanking measures and framework conditions for the entire sector, as was stated at the beginning of July in Parliament, and so we think it's quite true. We need to have more renewables. We have to have an alternative charging structure, and we have to look at the whole CO2 cycle of cars and lorries, and see how that fits into the whole emissions trading system. But it's sure that when we change away from the, the combustion engine, there's going to be a big changes, and I think shared mobility is going to be a big play over the next few years. I'd like to say something about the small companies which don't have a lot of capital. We have to help them. We don't want to lose them because they there's jobs in those small companies and a lot of added value in the individual regions. So the consequences of this change is, of the change is not a matter of course. We need help. We're already using EU funds to supply SME uh, to support SMEs in the changes they have to go through. We already have a cluster with 102 companies, uh, 4 million turnover, and we need to continue. 30,000 employments. We need to continue along this road. We've talked about the skills, and we also need to look at investment and promotion. Thank you. More or less done. Ich danke sehr, dass Thank you very much to the COR for supporting this alliance, and in the future we'd be very happy to participate. Or to Walter Drandzic for three minutes on behalf of Renew Europe Group. Thank you, Mr. President. I will speak Croatian. Mr. Commissioner, dear colleagues. Automotive sector Automotive sector envisages a broad uh, circle of large companies, but also small and medium companies, but also including craft shops and service shops, starting from research, innovation, production, and then marketing and sales. Something that we often forget is also the broad sector of after sales. We are all included in this. 
practically every country, every region as well. We all have parts of this very uh, complex mechanism in our regions. And this is a very complex uh, system of, um, of products and services which envisages a lot of research and innovation. My region of Istria is not highly positioned in this map of the European automotive industry, but uh, we do understand definitely that uh, traditional automobile, aut automotive superpowers are definitely having a difficult time today. But this is also a great uh, opportunity opportunity and that's why we need uh, good examples of excellence so we had a sm small startup in croatia which became a leader in electric super cars and they took over bugatti for example this attracted a new investment which opened 700 new jobs with high added value we see also the speeding up of the development of electric mobility, starting from the new producers, but also the traditional automotive industry is included in this, involved in this. They are moving away from the internal combustion engines, and this is definitely why we support this initiative. I don't think we need to fear anything. We need to be brave. We need to be fast. We need to decarbonize this sector as soon as possible. We need to invest in the necessary infrastructure, into knowledge, into skills, and speed up the transition and facilitate the transition which is already happening. I believe that uh, along with, with innovation, uh, new technologies and requalification and upskilling or reskilling of the new worker workforce, we can all contribute uh, to the decarbonization and uh, our shared goals. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now give the floor to Marco Marsilio to intervene on behalf of ECR Group. You have the floor for two and a half minutes. Grazie, Presidente. Thank you, Chairman. Abruzzo is a region in the center of Italy which is playing a central role in preparing some of these alliances and uh, in preparing for industrial transition. We're all aware of the fact that sustainable uh, transport must become more sustainable and we can't hide the fact that that's true in our region as well. We have uh, a lot of uh, automobile production and it's becoming increasingly difficult to move towards this trans transition. Now, as the reform, as uh, the group that we work for, uh, we are now moving towards 2030, the 2035 goals and that means that there are limits imposed upon us and that jobs are at risk. So we hope that the Commission will be able to go back to their decisions and make significant changes to the proposals. The um, industry concerned has cross-border supply chains, for example, working very much with a regional focus. And it's going to be very difficult to, to move away from dependence on gas and uh, or Russian oil and gas uh, when we are working with um, uh, unstable and sometimes hostile uh, countries like China, which might monop uh, have a monopoly on the market of electric batteries. It's going to be very difficult for us to move towards that. Every area has their own specificities in addition to that. And it's very important that we have a proper detailed assessment of the territorial impact and the regional impact of this proposal so that we can have a fair transition which doesn't cause damage. In the light of these considerations, it's very important that we have more flexibility in the state aid arrangements for individual regions so that we can avoid some of the negative impact. We need to ensure that we have proper support measures in place for local and regional authorities to encourage them to adopt new technology and that would involve, of course, investment of public and private funding so as to ensure that uh, the whole industry can remain competitive. Now, it's also very important that uh, we ensure that uh, the public has access to zero emissions vehicles. If we don't uh, provide such support, uh, we will have a situation um, that uh, Commissioner Valian was talking about whereby uh, in 2030, 30 million electric cars will 
be circulating on the roads without proper pre preparation. So, as far as we're concerned, we need to ensure that proper preparation is in place. Thank you. Sergio Perez Garcia, on behalf of the European Alliance, you have the floor for two minutes. Thank you. El 31% del PIB de Navarra es industrial. Now, uh, a large part of Navarro is an industrial and uh, also the automotive industry. That makes up for about 50% of exports uh, from our regions. So, uh, also, therefore, uh, uh, about 13,000 jobs. We have the Posvaran factory, which is recognized as one of the best in the uh, best in region. We have uh, three universities uh, which are leaders in this area as well. And as Commissioner Schmidt said, it's very important that we support upskilling of workers in the automotive sector uh, so that uh, we avoid a negative impact in our region. We need to work across Europe to promote green technology. This will lead to train, uh, changes, of course, which are going to affect our workers and their families. We are uh, one of the first um, um, regions in our country which has provided incentives for people to acquire electric cars. However, it's necessary for us to be flexible, more flexible, with state aids so that support can be provided to indus the industry as it converts to new areas. Our re region has 25% of its border uh, with France, and we would encourage uh, uh, more work on a network of uh, recharging points for cars. And uh, it's very important that we work across borders so as to uh, introduce uh, pilot projects across Europe, which can be interoperable. We are, at the moment, uh, working towards the European Green Deal, but we make sure we need to ensure in doing that we don't leave anybody behind. Thank you. Half of the Greens will intervene. Florian Hasler for two minutes. You have the floor. Vielen Dank, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, liebe Kolleginnen und. Thank you very much. Baden-Württemberg is the government that I represent, and it's the very cradle of automotive production. 470,000 jobs in total in small and bigger companies. And therefore, the transformation of the automotive industry is a crucial issue for us and for Europe as a whole, both economically and ecologically. And therefore, in our federal state, we have decided that we want it to be a climate-neutral region. We want to have as much security as possible in this transformation process, and we want to create future-proof jobs. So we set up the Automotive Industry Dialogue Group. Let us now transfer this to European level, because I think if we're going to have an economically and socially just a transition. We need to have the proper flanking measures. We need to have more charges throughout Europe, both in rural and in urban areas. We need to have much more renewable energies and to have a better distribution network. If we can charge our cars with green electricity, we're helping the climate. We really need your help, Commissioner, and we need to invest massively in the training of our workers so that they have the skills that will be needed in the future. Thank you very much for saying what you did about the Skills Alliance. We'll look at this. We're very happy that we're now setting up the Automotive Regions Alliance. It's an important signal to be sending to have the proper framework conditions for the further development of the automotive sector. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Last group of uh, speakers, members from the floor, and also concerned regions that are members of COR. I give the floor to Patrick Molinos for two minutes. He comes from Bourgogne, France Comté. You have the floor, two minutes. Now, give the floor to Christian de Beve 
for two minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président, Monsieur le Commissaire. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, President. Thank you, colleagues. I think we need to prepare for the future rather than just suffering the consequences of it. We all know that it's very important that we need to prepare for the future rather than just suffer the consequences of it. And that's exactly where we stand now. We have the 55% uh, uh, reduction of emissions by 2030 with 100 by um, uh, eventually 100% of very binding targets. And the question is how can we reconcile those objectives with uh, not destroying a whole important sector in our economy? It's not just a question of an environmental revolution. It's a question of changing behaviours and mentalities in the automotive industry. And, in fact, uh, it's the whole issue of mobility that we need to rethink. We're talking about 120,000 jobs and 220 uh, businesses in our area. That's to say one quarter of the whole industry in terms of production and export. So it's very important indeed for us. Also, we have the climate emergency, which means that uh, we can't try and find ways of gaining time. What we need to do is find measures which can help the industry as it moves forward to convert without major damage and without uh, a negative impact on employment. We very much support the declaration which is being proposed to the Committee of the Regions today. The Committee of the Region has, in this area, as with others, the opportunity to show how useful it can be for businesses and regions vis-à-vis -vis the Commission. We need a political area for discussion and debate where we can talk about our environmental economic goals. Of course, we could say that this transformation is only going to affect the automotive industry, but these are ambitious uh, goals and they're extremely binding, so it's a, 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 an unprecedented challenge. And that's why we need public, rex flexible, rapid and effective um, strategies in place. Thank you. Goes to Josef Viskupic from Trnava. You have the floor for two minutes. Uh, thank you very much, dear Mr. Commissioner, dear Mr. Chair, dear colleagues. Thank you very much. Uh, it is very important uh, for me to take a floor during this uh, session uh, on such an important topic as uh, Automotive uh, Skills Alliance is. The automotive production and uh, supply chain in my region, uh, Trnava, country Slovakia, for most uh, of, uh, account for most uh, the economic activity. Regions with strong, strong uh, automotive ecosystem, such as Ternava region is, are now facing the green transition, and it is uh, not anymore the question of uh, whatever will be affect uh, our regional development, yes or no, but rather how strong the impact will be. The regional administration, uh, as uh, regional administration, we need strong tools in our hands in the process of uh, transformation to be able to for ease adapt or cooperate among of each other, but uh, more importantly, our local expertise and concerns have to be taken into account in uh, every step uh, of the process. Having uh, been the president of the Turnava region um, for almost five years, I understand perfectly what the, are the needs uh, that should be addressed within uh, our territory. I see uh, investing in human capital among the most essential and uh, valid action uh, that can be taken in form of uh, concerted upskilling projects, training and relevant educational scheme, schemes. Uh, this is why I'm really happy uh, that my region is an in active member of uh, Automotive Skill Alliance, which opens doors for the cooperation in European level based on the local and regional experience. Dear colleagues, I would like to express a strong support for the Automotive Regions Alliance. We need uh, uh, ready to work together with automotive regions uh, around the Europe to ensure fair and just you. transition for all. Thank you very much, Mr. Commissioner, and a great support for Battery uh, Alliance. Uh, I think it's a great Thank idea. Thank you. From Catalonia, Albert Castellanos. Floor for two minutes. Uh, President del Comité de les Regions, uh, Comissari Smith. President of the Committee of the Regions, Commissioner Smith, very good afternoon and uh, very nice to be here at this committee now. As far as the Catalan government is concerned, uh, we are very enthusiastic about uh, this uh, initiative being taken by the Committee of the Regions. 
we have, of course, had a very clear statement of us uh, moving forward in this key sector in Europe and in our country. And uh, uh, we don't have as much, uh, uh, or at least the richness of Europe is reflected in its regions. Catalan uh, Catalonia is a leader in the automotive sector and wishes to continue to be that. We need to bear in mind that one out of every four uh, vehicles in Spain are produced in Catalonia. And it's the second most uh, important industry after the agri-food industry in our region and a very important proportion of our GDP. 40,000 people are employed in the sector and there are more than 350 businesses uh, in the overall value chain. And this, as I say, is a, uh, a leader also, this value chain, in moving towards ele the use of electric vehicles. Now, in, Volkswagen said that in 2025 they are going to start producing their own electric vehicles. And we've also got startups operating, Wellbox, for example, and others with uh, an international reputation. So we are talking about the most important uh, transformation over the last 50 years with the electrification system and autonomous vehicles. And in Catalonia, we believe that we need to focus particularly, as the statement of the declaration by the Alliance says, on certain areas. We're not just talking about uh, the um, the the process, but we need to work on the process and make sure that nobody is left be is left behind. So you can very much count on our support. Ski for for one minute. Forgot me. There's Gotthard before, and this is me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you don't want to speak now. Tobias Gotthard, you have the floor for one minute. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yeah, Bayern is one of the leading automotive Bavaria is one of the leading automotive industry regions in Europe. Our, we always uh, have a fight about whether Baden-Württemberg or Bavaria is the leading region. But in any case, we very much welcome the setting of this initiative. We have about a quarter of a million jobs in um, Bavaria and 1,100 companies. And when it comes to tools, we have uh, m many more companies companies which deliver to the automobile industry. 33% of our turnover or our income in the land comes from the automotive industry. So therefore it's very important that we keep looking at the technical requirements without forgetting about the green goals. E-fuels continue to be an important aspect of this, so we shouldn't forget about uh, the combustion engine altogether. For you have the floor for one minute. No? Schwarz Kiefer, one minute. Dan Boyle, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, President. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the idea of, of uh, an automotive alliance uh, from regions uh, is to be welcomed uh, and encouraged. The idea of car companies wanting to identify the need to change is also something to be welcomed. However, uh, th that there has to be a degree of seriousness in following the trends that need to be trend, uh, followed. The Commissioner has indicated in his opening statement the need for the business model to change. Uh, and this means car companies realising that consumers will not change their cars as often 
This means that the use of cars needs to be more circumscribed. Uh, and trends where larger vehicles are being produced, like sports utility vehicles, SUVs, uh, where many of the electrical vehicles are being promoted as SUVs, are contradictions in terms. Because more materials are being used, causing more carbon being created to make the SUVs, uh, and for larger electrical vehicles to be made, uh, they, they'll use more carbon in how the electricity is being charged into those cars. So those type of contradictions are the very things that the Automotive Alliance needs to tackle. Thank you so much. The floor goes to Elia Del Milio for one minute. Grazie, pres Thank you, President. The car industry plays a central role in the economic uh, fabric of the Lombardy region. For example, it's important to note that we have about uh, 1,000 businesses, 20,000 jobs, and a turnover of 20 billion euros a year. Now, we have the Sustainable Mobility Manifesto in the Lombardy region. We are asking for conditions to be put in place so we can have a gradual technological transition and a rational one, so we avoid a situation which would lead to a loss of leadership in Europe, uh, which we've acquired over a century's time. Now, this proposal to impose a stay on production of combustion engines by 2035 is the result of an ideological choice, which might mean that our industry ends up being dependent on third countries, such as China. And this would mean that we lose uh, autonomy in production in Europe. Uh, and... Uh, we hope that we're going to be able to receive proposals on creating special uh, funding, but uh, we're not sure. We believe that uh, the Alliance's statement is a good way of uh, putting our position forward. goes to Josef Kobor. You have the floor for one minute. Dear colleagues, the necessary transition to zero emission vehicles will have a major socio-economic impact at local level and the labor market. I think uh, we have to let me clear. The road to climate neutrality defined and the Green Deal agenda is, is and must not be in question. So I think in this initiative we have to speak about small and medium enterprises who are suppliers for production, electric buses, electric vans, trucks and shared vehicles. vehicles. So uh, this is the main question there, small and medium enterprises who are suppliers and not for the big factories. Uh, it is uh, the main region of, of this initiative, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Markula, you have the floor for one minute. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you for the floor. I'm happy to be speaking uh, uh, for the Finnish uh, uh, delegation. I would like to uh, uh, mention the role of Finland uh, as a modern nation, which uh, is very far uh, in uh, the technological front, uh, very well developed. And I would like to stress the fact that it is really important to move rapidly forward. This is why this alliance is an excellent solution. We have a lot of know-how on uh, traditional car industry. Or, but also future uh, cars, because cars will start flying, and whatever that, uh, there is in between uh, ro road transport and uh, flying. Well, I have uh, learned to drive uh, on ice. Uh, uh, this was on the sea, which was frozen. Uh, so you, it needs to be borne in mind that in the Arctic regions, uh, the circumstances are very different. And uh, thank you. Goes to Mr. Molinos for one minute. Okay. No, thank you. We we have now um, um, a message that comes to us through video from the Prime Minister of Saxony, uh, Michael Kretschmer. I would like to greet you all in the Committee of the Regions. You're a very important body, and through your work, you've been able to launch a lot of initiatives over the years, and you've been bringing people together. I'd like to thank you on behalf of Saxony. 
as you know, we live in an area where we have three countries coming together, Germany, Poland and Czechia. We keep an eye on your work and we profit from it. So I'm all the great, more grateful that you've taken up the automobile boat industry. It's a region that we benefit from and that we're dependent on that we would like to develop further. And it's important that we all speak together in the context of the transformation. The way I see it, e-fuel is going to be very important and we must be technologically open-minded. We have to make sure that we find the right answer, and this new alliance will supply that. I hope that you will be able to do some intensive work, and I wish you the best of luck, and I hope we'll have a meeting in Saxony. Best of luck. To Commissioner for final remarks about this debate. You have the floor, Commissioner. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. First, I, I want to thank you for this very constructive, positive, uh, and largely optimistic debate. Uh, we know that this is a huge challenge, but that uh, we uh, have to uh, manage it and we have to build this transition in a just and fair way. Now, uh, there is one issue I want just to add. This is social dialogue. The Commission is convinced that we will be able to manage this transition also through good social dialogue. Social partners have to work together in order to, to really make this uh, transformation a success, especially in terms of jobs, quality jobs, reskilling, upskilling. So social dialogue is very important. I agree fully that we have to pay a very high attention to the situation of SMEs because they are confronted with the highest problems, uh, we have to support them. So the issue which has been mentioned about state aid, we have to look at that, uh, how uh, SMEs especially are uh, supported. Uh, I also want to say that certainly uh, transforming the car industry is not the end of the whole story. The real story is much broader, much larger. It's about infrastructures, building the infrastructures, reloading stations, but it's also about producing uh, CO2-free energy, electricity. And here it means that we have really to invest a lot in the coming years into mainly renewables to be, to be sure that the, uh, the, the, the electromobility is also really, really uh, 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 CO2-free. Uh, so I think uh, the big challenge is also about infrastructures and energy production. So I think uh, in this context, uh, uh, this is a major project for Europe. It's a chance for Europe. It's a chance for Europe's industry. It's a chance for all your regions. And that's why we have to work and that, uh, to work together. I think uh, the initiative, again, of the Committee of Regions to bring regions together to uh, foster cooperation between regions, as it has been said, is really something which uh, uh, helps us to make uh, this transformation successful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. It's, uh, it has been our pleasure. Thank you. It has been our pleasure to welcome you here, and thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and to share with us your insights and your perspective about this such an important issue. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you again.